Hi folks, today I'd like to read an excerpt from the novel A House for Mr. Biswas by one of my favorite authors, V.S. Naipaul. Um, kind of doing a little research into his um, biography. Uh, it turns out he's kind of a nasty fellow. It certainly has a bad reputation. Um, he's argumentative. Uh, he treated his wife and his mistresses abominably um, and rather cruelly. But then, you know, it does seem to me that so many great artists have rocky, uh, repulsive private lives. <laughs> I just got done uh, seeing a movie about uh, uh, the Chinese artist um, A.I. Weiwei. Ai Weiwei? Yes, Ai Weiwei. And um, he, even he, he's, a, he's a hero in the West because he's been uh, uh, critical of the Chinese government and he's been uh, thrown in jail by the Chinese government, etc. And even he has a mistress and a, a one-and-a-half-year-old child by his, his 25-year-old mistress. <laughs> so, I don't know. I, th I don't know if it's just a, um, an occupational hazard being a jerk or being a self-centered jerk is just one of the things that you need to be in order to be a great artist. But anyway, all that beside, I really don't think uh, there's any point in judging artists by their personalities. It's really their art that matters. So I would like to uh, just read you a little excerpt of this. Um, I think it's a very funny book. And perhaps encourage you to read it Amazon as well. Get your cocoa. And let's listen to uh, a tale from the pages of literature as read by Uncle Bud. So Mr. Biswas is uh, applying for a job at, uh, as a reporter at a paper in Trinidad. Uh, he's an Indian guy who has been, his family was brought there to cut cane, very much like B.S. Naipaul himself. He has very little formal education and uh, was raised in dirt, poor, backbreaking poverty. So anyway, the, uh, the <laughs> editor speaks first. How old are you? 31? You have come from the country. You are 31. You have never written and you want to be a reporter. What do you do? Mr. Biswas thought of a state driver, exalted it to overseer, rejected it, rejected shopkeeper, rejected unemployed. He said, sign painter. Come tomorrow if you are serious. We'll give you a month's trial, but no pay. He worked with enthusiasm. His reading had given him an extravagant vocabulary, but Mr. Burnett, the editor, was patient. He gave Mr. Biswas copies of London papers, and Mr. Biswas studied their style until he could turn out presentable imitations. It was not long before he developed a feeling for the shape and scandalizing qualities of every story, and to this he added something of his own. And it was part of his sudden good fortune that he was working for the Sentinel, and not for the Guardian or the Gazette. For the facetiousness that came to him as soon as he put pen to paper, and the fantasy he had hitherto dissipated in quarrels with his wife and invective against his in-laws, were just the thing Mr. Burnett wanted. Let them get their news from the other papers, he said. That is exactly what they are doing at the moment anyway. The only way we can get readers is by shocking them, get them angry, frighten them, you just give me one good fright, and the job is yours. Next day, Mr. Biswas turned in a story. Mr. Burnett said, you made this up. Mr. Biswas nodded. Pity, the story was headlined. Four children roasted in hut blaze. Mother helpless watches. I like the last paragraph, Mr. Burnett said. This read, Sightseers are pouring into the stricken village, and we do not feel we are in a position to divulge its name, as yet. In times like this, an old man told me last night, we want to be left alone. 
abandoning fiction, Mr. Biswas persevered, and Mr. Burnett continued to give advice. I think you'd better go a little easy on the amazing scenes being witnessed. And how about turning your passers-by into ordinary people every now and then? Considerably is a big word, meaning very, which is a pointless word anyway. And look, several has seven letters, many has only four, and oddly enough, has exactly the same meaning. I like your piece on the Bonnie baby competition. You made me laugh, but you haven't frightened me yet. And Mr. Biswas wanted to shock Mr. Burnett. It seemed unlikely that he would ever do so, for in his fourth week, he was made shipping reporter, taking the place of a man who had been killed at the docks by a crane load of flour, accidentally falling from a great height. And a ship called on the way to Brazil. Within 24 hours, Mr. Biswas was notorious. The Sentinel, reviled on every hand, momentarily increased its circulation, and Mr. Burnett was jubilant. He said, You have even chilled me. The story. The leading one on page three read, Daddy comes home in a coffin. U.S. Explorer's Last Journey on Ice by M. Biswas. Somewhere in America in a neat little red roof cottage, four children ask their mother every day, Mommy, when is Daddy coming home? Less than a year ago, Daddy, George Elmer Edmund, the celebrated traveler and explorer, left home to explore the Amazon. Well, I have news for you, kiddies. Daddy is on his way home. Yesterday, he passed through Trinidad in a coffin. Mr. Biswas was taken on the staff of the Sentinel at a salary of $15 a fortnight. The first thing you must do, Mr. Burnett said, is to get out and get yourself a suit. I can't have my best reporters running about in these clothes. Sentinel sort of sounds like a Fox News, doesn't it? <laughs> anyway, very darkly funny book. Get it? Woo! There you go. Mr. Biswas, V.S. Naipaul. And, uh, and while you're at it, you might try... Uh, uh, the Enigma of Arrival, which is um, not so funny. It's just a very thoughtful book. Anyway, I guess it's just uh, trying to make the point that just because you're uh, a great artist doesn't mean you're a great human being, and just because you're a great human being doesn't mean you're a great artist. So what are you going to do? Thanks for watching. Bye.